Hello everybody, co-owner Om Gandhi here. Welcome one, welcome all to the audio edition of the Fireside Chats. For more stories like this, go to our website at runtrymag.com. That's runtrymag.com. You can also find us on Instagram at runtrymag. And you can also find us on Facebook at runtrybike. And now, on to the show. Perfect timing, hey, Raul. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. Raul, I gave the people a little bit of background on you and I, how we know each other, but I'm going to give them a little bit more, and maybe I might, re might be refreshing your memory, too. So a number of years ago, Raul owned a business called The Tri Shop in Plano, Texas. At the time, I was unemployed, and I was looking to start a nonprofit with – a friend of mine called Greg Larson, and we popped into the Tri Shop to figure out how we could establish this nonprofit circling around helping people um, train for triathlons and how we could work yeah, with the Tri Shop. Raul, do you remember it similarly? That, uh, that was a, yeah, at least what, a decade ago? Yeah. So for the people who don't know you, Raul, give us a little bit background of who you are, what you did previously, and we'll get into QO, we'll get into some of your um, travels and what led to QO, sure. but just give us some background um, on, on yourself. Um, I was an overweight person in college, and uh, I started with a 5K and uh, got into triathlon. I went from a 5K to a full Ironman in about a year, and after doing it for a few years, I had the idea of starting a triathlon shop, and uh, had that shop for 10 years. I actually became one of the best triathlon shops in the nation. It was top 10 by Slow Twitch. Uh, so pretty cool experience. And then, sure. I'm going to interrupt you. Like, this top 10, like, you have to understand what went into this store. They had an endless pool. They had a bike fit that was bar none the best so that you got comfortable on the right bike for you. They had uh, cycling classes there, plus treadmills. So if you wanted to test out running shoes and then the other complimentary products like um, swim gear, goggles, um, bike shoes, running shoes, shorts, hats, and t-shirts, but it was oh, a state-of-the-art facility. So don't sell yourself short on thank it. You. Um, just yeah, I think what made it uh, popular too was the community that we built. Uh, we were big and getting people into triathlon we made huge efforts there so um, a lot of people started with us and went all the way to ironman as well and that's i think that was a huge part of our success so let me ask you this obviously you still don't have the store today for whatever reasons but was it because it was part of the reason because um triathlon in and of itself it's just a very difficult sport to get people engaged with. Is it the expense? Like, where did you see the business for you happening if you were building a community and then well, the biggest to reason the was uh, well, retail is tough to begin with the the scheduling and everything. Both the, my business partner and I had kids, uh, so being tied up every single weekend wasn't the same as when we were ten years younger. So that was a big, probably the biggest reason. Uh, why we decided to close it down. And uh, I don't think either one of us, we missed a lot of th things, but we don't regret it just because we had a lot of time to spend with our kids, you know, growing as they were two, three years old. So, In the few years after you guys closed the business, you probably were still pe kind of paying attention to triathlon, triathlon business. Did you see anybody or did you hear of any businesses across the country kind of copying what you guys yeah, have put together to up some there? degree I mean, um, and we were flattered by it I mean we we felt like we did things the right way and and we were happy for others to be doing things the right way you know getting people on the right size bikes and uh, teaching them the right things so uh, we always did our best to try to learn from the experts you know like like Dan Anfield um, and Know, that that always helped to we knew that we weren't the smartest out there but that we could 
learn from the smart people. And that's what we strive to do. Before we start moving on to what came next for you, um, help the audience because we have a lot of people who are just getting started in triathlon that follow our accounts and, and listen to these conversations. Help explain to them why it's so important to get the a bike. The reason it's so important is because you're going to enjoy the sport a lot more if you get the right size bike. Uh, it's going to keep you from, from getting injured. Uh, you're going to enjoy your rides more and you're going to be faster while doing them without spending any added energy. So um, say the biggest one is the, the injuries though. Uh, when I started, I had a, a size 51 frame. I just bought a bike. I didn't know any, any better. Uh, and I really, I have really long legs. So I really need like a 54, 55. And uh, yeah, like I learned really fast that my knees were going to start, started hurting and, and all that. So when we started our shop, we're like, we're going to make sure that people know that they have to get the right size bike. And yeah, I'll, when I hear people are like, oh man, I, this hurts or that hurts on the bike. I'm like, riding a bike, even for Ironman distance, shouldn't be painful. You should be sore pushing your body for 112 miles, but it shouldn't be painful. And it's always make sure you go get bike fit. <clears throat> so you close the store. Tell us what happens next in the endurance, in, in your world that leads to, you know, continued participation in the endurance sports world. Sure. I kind of know, but I want you to uh, tell so, me. So um, after we closed the store, my wife and I had talked about doing a sabbatical, taking the year off and uh, just traveling some and uh, doing some things. So we decided to sell our home because we knew we were going to be gone for a while. So we sell our home and uh, we signed a lease at an apartment for six months. And um, we were three months into it, uh, three months left in our lease before we left. And the building gets struck by lightning and catches on fire in the middle of the night on a Saturday. And the place just burns to the ground uh, with all their stuff. So after that happened, we were like, okay, that's our sign. We need to go now. So uh, that's what started uh, our journey into our sabbatical. Uh, so it started three months earlier. Keep your urban running adventures going all winter long with high performance traction designed specifically for icy roads. The Catula Nano Spikes footwear traction have a low profile design that won't affect your stride while running. The 10 ultra tough tungsten carbide spikes give you traction that you can trust. Don't let the ice and snow stop you from reaching your goals. For more information, visit Catula.com. Before we continue with the story, for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Jason Bahamundi. I am the founder and one of the co-owners of Run Tribe Bike. Joining me today is Om Gandhi, who is also one of our co-owners, and Raul Cardenas, who is the founder and owner of QO Nutrition. So you start your sabbatical three months early, and where do you go, okay, so, and what are you doing? Um, we started in northern Mexico and moved all along the Pacific, uh, hitting all the beach towns along the, the Pacific coast, uh, all the way to Chiapas in the very south part of Mexico. Uh, but at one point I told my wife, it would be cool to uh, do Caballo Blanco Ultra because I had ran it in 2019. Now it's 2021, two years later, and I, I'd say, oh, I'd be pretty cool to go back. So we go back, I rent a place for a week and get there and because of COVID, the race was canceled. Uh, but I, uh, the, the uh, town, everybody was very welcoming and they invited me out to run and they still did kind of like a very special event, but it was very small, maybe like 15 people. So I run with them and um, decided to stay after that. So uh, I told her, I was like, I love this place. I love the area. Let's uh, rent a place for a couple of months and stay here and relax. So uh, we rented our cabin and stayed there for for all of March and April and some of May. Um, and oh man, it was awesome two months, just nothing but uh, running. There's not much to do other than going out and being in nature. 
and going out to Urique is like kind of like if you went back like hundreds of years because like the people there still grow their own crops uh, uh, yeah it's it's something that you have to see for yourself I, I'm trying to get a big group out there so that more people can experience it to need experience did you feel like it was just a simpler life that you didn't have, you didn't worry about technology and who's posting yeah, what to Facebook exactly. and Instagram Very kind of simple. Uh, like uh, from what you do on a daily basis to what you eat, um, you just don't have access to, to a whole lot. Like uh, the groceries, the one grocery store in town only gets uh, groceries every two weeks. So, uh, you're out and you pretty much have to so, like eat uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, organic meat. So it's like very, very clean and simple life. You're out there running, correct? You're out there running on the trails and in the mountains. You weren't so running by yourself. Who were many you of the with? runs were with Taramara. So uh, the when we got there, we met a family and the family took care of the grounds of the cabin where we were staying. And they were Tarumara. And after meeting them and uh, living with them and, you know, sharing coffee with them in the mornings and stuff, uh, we realized that they had adopted a girl, a 17 year old Tarumara girl that had lost her parents. Uh, so the family had to move and the girl was going to be pretty much left by herself. So we offered for her to stay um, in our cabin. So we gave her the ups upstairs bedroom and she lived with us for, for we're like, she was like a couple of weeks in and she was very shy, kept to herself. But as she opened more and more, um, one night we were talking and, and she goes, Oh yeah, I ran Caballo Blanco, and I was like, "You did?" Okay. So, uh, she's <laughs> petite, and she's like, like I said, very young, seventeen years old. I was like, "You ran it?" And then she's like, right. "Yeah, I ran it in 2019, the same year that I did it." And I was like, "What was your time?" And she's like, nine hours, and it took me fifteen." So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After that, I was like, "Okay, I need to go running with you." So, so. My wife and I started running with her, and uh, during the, the one of the runs, she's like sharing her powder with us, uh, pinole powder. Um, and when I started training with it, I was like, "Oh man, this stuff really works. It's like really easy on your stomach, gives you a great energy. It's just very, very clean and." Uh, like the idea of yeah, like works very similar to you can, but it's like completely natural, no preservatives, no additives, um, no sugar. Uh, and, and yeah, as so I trained more and more with it, I was like, I have to do something with this. Yeah. So when you were running out there before talking to her, you were still taking your the stuff that you would normally take, whatever products you would yeah, use I had in the US you were using there. Yeah, I with me that I that I had bought in Chihuahua in the city before heading out there. Yeah. And the other people that you were running with, yes. were they using, it's Pinoli, is that how you pronounce it? Were they using Pinoli powder or were, and looking at you like, what is this uh, thing you're putting well, in your mouth? They're aware of it because of the, the race brings people from all over the world. So they know that they take different stuff than they do, but it's us that we don't know what they're taking or, we're not willing to experiment, especially during a big race like that. But once I start, had time and right. started using it, I realized it's better than anything that we're taking here. So, Your first re reaction to the 17-year-old wasn't, oh, yeah, yeah. But you're only 17 <laughs> and I'm 45-ish. It wasn't, yeah. wait till you get my kid. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I got smoked by a 17-year-old little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So we're obviously leading into the whole idea of how QO Nutrition got started. So give us some background because, and I asked you this in the green room, like you're not the first person to have run with the 
Terramura or Ronan Caballo Blanco. So why has this not been something that people are looking for in the U.S. from the bigger companies? I think it's just because it's difficult. Uh, like to begin with, the a lot of people have they believe that pinola is just corn powder, and it's not. It's it's actually a there's a lot more to it. It's different ingredients. So it has three carb sources from corn, oats, and rice, but uh, it also has amaranth seeds, which uh, if you look at the benefits of amaranth, one is like it stabilizes blood glucose, so you don't get that sugar spike. And then it has anise flour and cinnamon, which are great for settling your gut and for fighting inflammation. So when I started looking at all the benefits of all the ingredients individually, it all clicked. I was like, okay, like these guys have had it figured out for hundreds of years. And here this whole time, I thought they were just taking corn, but it's it's not. It's a lot more more than that. And that's part of the reason why it works so well. So you did research. What's your background that would lead you to start doing this as opposed to just accepting, okay, um, this is what my, this is? I don't have a nutrition background or anything, but just having tested so many products during my nine years at TriShop and working with so many athletes, and having worked with many nutritionists, uh, I just, just knew that that this product were worked, and it uh, being an endurance athlete myself and having uh, tried it, I said that this is better than anything I have ever tried. And you you refer to QO stands for Quick Optimal Nutrition. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why is that important? Why is it important that it be known as because quick optimal it's nutrition? It's so much more than just a sports nutrition product. So the way they take it, it it's I would say it's about sixty percent of their diet. So they they make the powder oh, and they keep um, many uh, pounds of it in their huts and caves, and uh, they take it on a daily basis. They basically carry a pouch around their waist. And if they're out in the field working or walking, all they do is take a spoonful of it and, and some water and they're good to go. So uh, it's much more than their running field. It's, it's a meal replacement for them in many instances. Uh, so that's another thing that I liked about the product that it's it's not just for the runner or triathlete. It's for anybody that wants to be healthier. Um, many of the Taramaras live well into their 90s, past 100, and they're very active the whole time. Like, uh, So a guy well into their, his 90s climbing up a mountain that took me, um, I was like three hours into my hike, and he was coming down. So I don't, I don't know exactly how long he went, but it, it was longer than three hours. Uh, and... And I asked him how he was. He didn't look 90. He said he was a, a 95, I believe, and um, and he looked like he was in his 70s. Yeah. Man, I don't know if I would go, go down here again. Smoked by 17-year-olds <laughs> and 95-year-olds. <95 Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, stay up here in the states. I'll I'll deal yeah. with that. So, um. I know you met Ohm at TRE. So Ohm, I'm gonna put you on the spot because you got to test some of Raul's product. Give the audience a little bit of feedback and testimonials oh, about Raul's down product. down compared to all the, and you know, compared and contrasted to all the sugary gels and things that I've had, um, it was the, like I told Raul in the green room, it was the best thing that I tasted at the running event. Um, but. I, you know, I, you know, I went up to him cause, uh, Jason, uh, introduced us and he gave me what I did not expect to get over there was a sample of like cookies. And, you know, I had the cookies and it was like savory. It was delicious. And it was like, I'd always had this conception that fuel had to be like just something you had to down for calories. And I'm like, man, this actually tastes really good for like, you know, feel that's not like the regular hot foods and stuff that you get like later in the race. And yeah, it was, all I could say was awesome. 
So, Raul, how do endurance sports athletes use it? And let's break it down into runners, cyclists, and triathletes. Like, they're going to be doing different things in different ways. How do, how do they incorporate your product into well, their Right uh, now, what I've plan? been telling people is just start, um, make it the beginning of your work, like 10 minutes before your workout. Take this as opposed to, um, you know, a lot of people have trouble, like, with their pre-race meal, for example. Like if you take two spoonfuls of this and do this every time, you know you're not going to have stomach issues and stuff like that. So I, I tell them start with that and don't take start taking those gels and other products so early. Um, get your body as you train more fat efficient and go longer and longer so that you start needing those gels and sugar products much farther down uh, along the race and. I think that's how it's going to help most people because um, all three runners, cyclists, and triathletes can do the same. Um, as far as taking it during the course, um, I mean, right now it's more difficult because you have to like make your own gel, so to speak. Like uh, if I just want to use Kyo, uh, I take the two spoons before but also make a few gels that I can take during the the remainder of the run um, yeah, like a squeeze sandwich, packet baggie, type of thing. a little bit of honey and water and chia seeds or something like that so it, it forms like yeah. a gel like consistency yeah. and we actually have a question Good. about that down in the audience from Mako Endurance Official he joined late and he's asking if it's a drink mix or a gel. And that was actually a question I was going to ask as well for you to tell the audience what forms the QO nutrition mix has come in. Yeah, QO is only available in two forms at the moment. Uh, one is the powder, which is just imagine uh, roasted corn ground to a powder. That's what it's like. It's a little gritty, uh, but the flavor is really good. Uh, it just mixes well with water or milk or coffee and take that before the run and then also made it into a cookie and the cookie is what's been more popular here lately because I used uh, I kept it really healthy I used uh, coconut oil as opposed to you know uh, vegetable oil just to, to give a little healthy fat to it and I used stevia as opposed to sugar just to give it a little bit of sweetness and I didn't use regular flour I used uh, oat flour to to make the cookies and so they're very healthy sugar-free um, vegan and they give you amazing energy obviously it has the pinole in there as well um and you know you mentioned sugar-free uh which makes me want to go back to something we talked about in the green room um other than the caballo race you've done you've also done the leadville race um you mentioned that you took 48 gels during that race did you deal with GI issues during that? <laughs> Jason shaking his head. So well, talk about that experience. I'm lucky in that my stomach can handle just about anything. Um, I did feel really bloated, like uh, towards the end of the race. My, I mean, my, it was visible. Uh, my stomach was very bloated, uh, but I, I never had. Uh, like I didn't have diarrhea or anything like that. What other people did. Uh, especially late in the race you see it a lot after mile 50 60 all sorts of issues pop up uh Cheryl, but, uh, 48. oh my god no <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did uh about, about a gel every 30 minutes or so plus some real food so yeah that's how i got to 48 gels <laughs> i can't imagine like i yeah. i'm i'm good on like one gel an hour and imagine trying to squeeze two gels yeah. an hour in them like yeah so hard to do so the um the consistency of the product and you're talking about like corn think about corn flour so not to not to put you on the spot to introduce a whole new product but you can, can we make, make a lot of different of things uh i wouldn't make tamales out of it but you, uh like today actually uh my mom and I made uh, Kyo pancakes, and they were amazing. Uh, uh, I think more like cookies or using it to batter stuff is it's really good. I've been using it a lot to 
uh, batter different things and put it in the air fryer and it just mix it with some spices and it's it's really good. So it is a slightly different product than if we were to buy and we're gonna competitors like a scratch yeah. claps or a tail with men, right? Because you're gonna put that in the yeah, bottle it's very different. And you're than gonna drink that. Anything you've seen, uh, like it's it's not gonna taste like Gatorade or anything like that. Uh, the this taste is more like roasted corn and notes. So the flavor goes more like with milk, water, or coffee, uh, not necessarily with like citrus juice type stuff. Uh, it wouldn't mix well with that. And it's going to be more versatile because if you're making pancakes and cookies, then you can make breads, banana mm -hmm. breads, and things of that nature with it. So for like an endurance athlete, if you're racing Leadville or Western States, and you want to have that real food feel versus a gel, you could make a banana bread yeah. type product with your product and then eat that exactly. at aid stations yes. and that kind of yeah, thing, you correct? Can cook a lot of different things with it. And so the way the body processes these um, all natural products that you're sourcing in Mexico, by the way, which is being consumed by the Terramara out there. And this is why <laughs> Raul got smoked by 17 year olds in 95. The actual same yeah, product that when, they were using down there, correct? When I decided to do it, I, I, that's the main thing that I wanted. I, I said I want to have the original recipe and source it from the same area so that, you know, I can tell people that they're getting exactly what you would get in the Copper Canyon. So running a business is not easy, as Om and I can attest to, because we're doing it ourselves. and We're a startup no different than you. Our past experiences in life help us decide how we're going to move our business along. How does the fire um, that your family um, left, uh, you know, after three months versus six months, how does that play a part in your business? How does seeing the 17-year-old play a part in your business? Like, where do you find your inspirations to keep this business moving forward on those well, hard days? Um, I'm a believer in God. Like, when I went, I didn't know what was going to happen with my life. I, I just knew that I needed some time to relax. And and as I did more and more soul searching, uh, just kind of came to me. It, it just uh, felt that like, like a mission, like, this is what you're here for, like to spread. You've never been happy with the products that you sold before uh, or with many of them. Uh, like you have access to many people that are well connected and especially in the run and triathlon worlds. And um, you know that this stuff works and it's something that's going to be good for everyone. So um start sharing it and see how it goes and um the thing was like i was never afraid because i said if if anything if it doesn't work out like i think i can still kind of share it on the side and get a job if i need to or do whatever uh, i have a you know previous experience before the shop where it wouldn't be difficult for me to find a, a job uh, if i needed to but so far it seems like it's going well and people are liking the product and uh, it seems like it has a lot of potential. That's awesome. I, and, you know, from knowing you from, you know, at least a decade or so ago, I am beyond excited for you and this product. Help the people who are watching this or who will listen to this later on understand where you're at today and where do you see this business going for yourself in, you know, three to five years? Three to, four, three to five years, I see it expanding into many retail stores. Like, um, I've only been doing it for three months now and I already have it in some uh, pretty reputable stores and uh, there's more coming. So uh, my goal would be to have it not only, not only accessible to runners and triathletes but more to just the general public like like i said anybody that uh wants to live a healthier lifestyle or, or wants likes the convenience of it just because the product itself is very convenient and uh i mean we all know time we're always 
short on time and busy and uh, so I think it can help those people as well so um, yeah my my goal for the next five years is to to have it accessible to a lot more people where so where can right people now, find it today uh, like I said I just started so my website's not even complete uh, if you go to uh, keonutrition.com uh, you'll find just a picture of the product and my phone number so people are calling me directly to <laughs> send orders uh, and and a few local stores here in Dallas but that's about to change because I just got reps in different areas starting this week so uh, it should be a, available in a lot more places plus I should have my Shopify store uh, open here pretty soon that's awesome. So um, before people just call you and start asking you, what's it cost? You know, what's it cost? What are they getting so the, uh, for that price? The bag of uh, Keo powder, Keo fuel, uh, it's retails for $49. And what they get is a pound and a half of this powder that if somebody's using it for both as a meal and to train with it, it it'll last you about a month. So it's very affordable. Uh, it's a lot less expensive than gels. Uh, you can feel a workout for about a dollar, uh, which, yeah, it's uh, people that are using it have noticed like how it's a lot more affordable. So you do have athletes yeah, right now in have, DFW that are using it? Say above 100 athletes that are using it pretty regularly. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, going to be a marketing statement from you, obviously, but what are they telling you about the product that, they, that they've enjoyed so uh, far? What most people notice is how saturating it is, like two tablespoons and you feel like you ate a whole meal. Um, you feel full for like four, out, four hours. Um, and also like the clean energy that it gives you, just uh, no ups and downs. <clears throat> you just feel like you have a, a lot of energy, but it's steady, not not like a jittery type feeling it's just um i mean i'd say even cleaner than when you drink a cup of coffee like i now will not drink a cup of coffee unless has a tablespoon of kilo in and a little bit of coconut oil and so with the um with the powder inside the cup of coffee since it can be made into a batter, is it just because it's more liquid than the powder? And, and if you're going to make it in a batter, you have less liquid type yeah, of thing? Yeah, uh, it's, the taste is good. It's, it's just a lot easier um, to mix in hot, hot or cold coffee, either one. Awesome. Um, if you have questions, we're going to, we're going to jump into a little bit of a rapid fire with Raul. If you have questions about the product, please ask them. You can comment. We'll make sure we address them or hit the little question mark um, to the right. If you're just joining us, this entire video will be on our Instagram feed right after we get done. But you can also find it on our website, YouTube channel tomorrow, and on our podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, and Google, Monday uh, the 23rd. Um, before we get into rapid fire yeah. questions, um, did you have any questions um, for Robin? One last question I had before we jumped into the rapid fire is, as somebody who's done like Tri Shop and is starting this business with Quick Optimal and has a lot of experience and has also gone through many hardships to get to where they are, especially with this business, uh, what would you say to somebody who is looking to take the leap to start a business or pursue a dream? Uh, what would you say to that person? Uh, I would always say to make the jump and not be afraid. Uh, I mean, I just take the, I'd rather fail and learn my lessons and move on and try again than to not ever try and, and always wonder what could have happened. Like uh, this way, you know, if it works, awesome. If it doesn't work, then I at least know that I gave it my best shot and that's always going to make me feel good going into whatever else I decide to do. So that's the approach that I take. Yeah. And I, I second that. So I teach marketing at the college level and I ask my students after we do stuff on the board, who's taking a picture of this and sending this idea for marketing to the company? And 
99% <laughs> of them are like shaking their heads no. And there, there's always one student, and I get to share this story today. He told me in class today that he took a chance, sent an email to a Fortune 500 company, and has an interview with the director of marketing next week. Like, he's like, I just took a chance. See, what's yep. the worst that, they, that happens? They tell me no, and I, and I keep reaching that. So, Raul, thank you for reinforcing that concept and idea because worst case scenario, they say no. Best case scenario is you learn the lesson from that no and you get better at it. Designed for running adventures on a variety of surfaces, the Catula Exospike's footwear traction are at home on ice and snow as well as on dry, rocky ground. 12 ultra-durable tungsten carbide spikes provide an impressive amount of grip when you need it and stand up to rocks and other abrasive trail features when you don't. Exospikes will inspire you to follow the trail less traveled, even when it's covered in ice. For more information, visit Catula.com. So we, we call these our rapid fire questions, Raul, but take time to think about it. These are just, you know, we, we talk a lot about serious topics leading up to this point, and now we just want to have fun. So um, when you're out running, whether you're running up and down mountains or running on a treadmill, are you listening to a podcast, to music, or uh, nothing at all? I switch it up. Sometimes I go with no music. Sometimes it's a podcast, and sometimes it's music. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd say what podcast. Do right now. Uh, I listen a lot to <clears throat> yeah. Lewis House. I like awesome, yeah. And pretty soon the yeah. run spread like fireside <laughs> chats, right? And then if you're listening to music, favorite genre uh, of music and favorite I like artist? Everything. I, for running, I do like a lot of EDM. Uh, just like the beats. It's kind of sewn out and keep me going. All right. So now we dive into the food portion of our, of our show, despite talking about QO Nutrition for a while. When it comes to pizza, are you a fan of pineapple on pizza or are you like get that uh, stuff no away pineapple. from pizza? No. Finally, after yeah. 10 consecutive pineapples on pizza, we got somebody teaming up with Jason here. <laughs> when it comes to candy corn, is candy corn a real candy or is it just candle, candle wax pretending to be candy? No can yes. candy corn for me. No candy corn. By the way, I, I mentioned this during Halloween, but they were in Thanksgiving, they were introducing a bacon flavored candy corn, which I can't imagine anything worse than regular candy corn than bacon flavored candy corn. So when it comes to peeps, are they something you'll enjoy or something you throw away immediately? Yeah, not yes. my thing. You're <laughs> it's got too much sugar in it anyway. It's a marshmallow. So do, you, uh, do yeah. you eat marshmallows when you're out camping? So when you when you roast the marshmallow, are you burnt to lightly a crisp tanned. or lightly tanned? Uh, I got to go burnt to a crisp. I need that to just charcoal it off. That's my favorite. Um, red velvet. Is red velvet a flavor or is it just chocolate cake with red uh, dye? I'd say it's a flavor. I like red velvet, yeah. All right, we're... We're starting to lose our <laughs> friendship, Raul. We got to pick. You're in, you're in Dallas, Texas. Barbecue. Do you like it Texas style, North Texas Carolina style, style, or Kansas City style? Which is for the people who oh, don't know. What do you? Yeah, yeah. Typically, yeah. Smoke typically brisket. brisket, right? Is yeah. typically the smoke, smoke, smoke brisket. Um, and then. This is my last question, Om. If you've got some to follow up, that'd be great. Pizza. There are three styles that I recognize: New York style, Chicago style, Chicago. or Detroit style. Chicago. Which one are you going with? <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> oh. With, you don't want on your pizza. You can't put pineapple in tomato soup. It wouldn't taste right. <laughs> Raul, thank you so much joining us let people know where they can find you whether it's on social media your website's up and coming but give that address so that people know we'll to look for bookmark thank today. you guys so much so it's qo yeah. nutrition uh, qo-nutrition.com uh, QO and we're at 
at Kyo Nutrition well. so on make Instagram. Awesome. Guys, make sure you're on the lookout for this product. Raul's going to hit it out of the park. He did a great job with Tri Shop, and I have no doubt we're going to see big things from him and QO Nutrition in the future. Raul, thank you so much for joining us. We look thank forward to following your journey you guys appreciate into the it. future. You too. Have a great night.